guys welcome to the creatively homemade channel my name is Jennifer and I love to share fun and creative paper crafting projects with you so today I have for you a pretty sunflower gratitude card that is just perfect for fall I made this using the painted harvest stamp set now this stamp set was in Stampin Up's holiday catalog last year and it made the cut and is in the annual catalog this year so that's kind of fun and I couldn't resist pulling it out to make a, a fall card for you today so let's get started and I'll show you how to make this so let me start by showing you what supplies you need to make this card. You're going to need paper, of course. Um, I am using Early Espresso Very Vanilla and Crumb Cake cardstock. You need the Painted Harvest Stamp Set. You're going to need the Coordinating Leaf Punch. You're going to need the Basket Weave Embossing Folder. You're going to need the Triple Banner Punch, but if you don't have this, you can um, cut that fishtail in for the banner with scissors and you're also going to need some ink I'm using six, six different colors you need two shades of yellow I've got daffodil delight and crushed curry you're going to need two shades of green I'm using old olive and pear pizzazz and then you're going to need two shades of brown I'm using crumb cake and early espresso so you want to start by cutting your paper for the card base, you need a piece of early espresso cardstock that is eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. You want to put the long edge up at the top of your scoring board and score that at four and a quarter inches. And fold that in half for your card base. You're going to need two pieces of very vanilla cardstock that are five and a quarter inches by four inches. One of them is going to go inside the card so you can write a greeting and then the other one is going to be embossed. Then you need another layer of early espresso that is three inches by four inches. You need another layer of very vanilla that is two and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. And then you need a strip of crumb cake cardstock that is five inches by one inches, or one inch, sorry. Um, if you missed any of those measurements, I have a blog post up that has all the step-by-step -step directions and includes those measurements. I'll link that down in the description box below. So next you want to emboss the very vanilla layer, one of them, we cut two, remember. And I'm going to be using the Basket Weave Dynamic Embossing Folder with this. This is a little bit thicker than a standard embossing folder that um, Stampin' Up! offers, but you get a deeper embossing with it. So it's really kind of cool. Now, to, this runs a little bit differently than your standard one. Um, you want to open your multi-use platform to tab number one, as with the other embossing folders. But with this one, you only want to run one plate. Normally, you do a sandwich between the plates and run it through. But this one's thicker, so you only need one plate. So go ahead and put that very vanilla cardstock layer into that embossing folder. Lay it on your plate. And you always want to run embossing folders with that fold going into the machine first. Otherwise, you risk cracking your embossing folder. So put the plate on top and then run it through and then that gives you a really detailed embossed piece to use it's so cool this is one of my favorite embossing folders of all times I think okay next we're going to do some stamping so I've already put all the stamps I am going to need from that Painted Harvest stamp set onto clear blocks. You're going to need that very vanilla layer we cut earlier and you're also going to need a scrap of very vanilla. So I'm going to start with that very vanilla layer and the I am thankful for you stamp. Using early espresso, ink that stamp up and then stamp that in the bottom right corner. And then using crumb cake, we're just gonna stamp a design randomly all over the, that layer. So this is a stamp that has like five little dots on it and it just provides some background texture. So I'm using crumb cake ink 
and just randomly stamp that all over your very vanilla layer. You just want to provide a little bit of design in the background to add some interest to the card. That looks good. So this can be set aside. Then you want to pull out that scrap paper. I'm going to start with the leaves. So I'm using Pear Pizzazz and Old Olive. Now these leaves are two, a two-step stamping process. You have one leaf that's more solid and you have one leaf that's more detailed. So I recommend using a lighter color for the base stamp that's um, more solid and then use a darker color to stamp over it. So I'm using Old Olive as the base. And you're going to need two leaves. So go ahead and stamp that twice. Now there's a punch that will cut this out for you, so stamp it close to the bottom of your paper. That'll make it easier to punch out later. And then with Pear Pizzazz, you're going to stamp directly over top of that. So I'm going to stand up here. It's easier when you're doing stamps that need to be lined up precisely. It's easier if you're standing over it looking down. You'll be able to line it up through the clear blocks better. Just like that. And then I'm going to repeat that for the second one. That looks good. Now if you have a Stamparatus that is perfect for these two-step stamps. Okay, now we're ready to start building our sunflower. Now I found it easier to actually start with the sunflower center. So I'm gonna stamp that in early espresso. Okay. Now the sunflower stamps are like the um, leaf stamp that we did earlier. It's a two-step process. So one of the stamps is more um, detailed and one of them is more used as a base layer. So I'm going to start with the base layer and put that down in Daffodil Delight ink. And then you can kind of just look through it and rotate around that center until you get it looking like you want it. Okay. And then stamp the other one on top of that in crushed curry and that will give definition to your image. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? Next we're going to use a couple of paper punches. So I've pulled out the Banner Triple Punch. And this has different channels in it so you can make banners that are one inch, um, one and a half inches and two inches wide with this. So I'm pulling out that crumb cake strip that we cut earlier and just slide that in the center channel all the way to the back of the punch and give it a punch and it gives you a nice fishtail end and repeat for the other side. Now of course if you don't have this punch you can always cut this with scissors. I just like that this gives it a really nice finished look to it. And then you're going to use the leaf punch that coordinates with the stamp set to cut out those leaf images. I always love it when a stamp set has coordinating punches or dies so you don't have to cut things out by hand. So turn that punch over and line up your image and cut it out. Easy peasy. And then repeat that for the other image. Okay. Next you want to cut out your sunflower image. Now unfortunately there isn't a stamp or die to cut this one out so you can just um, fussy cut it out. Um, you can always use a circle die if you prefer. Now I just like the look of it when it's cut out with the ragged edges. So I'm just cutting a real quick circle around it and then I'm going to go back and cut the details. I think it gives it a nicer look. 
if you cut um, some around the leaves, the individual, or well, actually the petals, I like the look that gives it. But certainly, if you don't want to take the time to cut this out, you could just cut it with a circle puncher die. Use like the two inch circle or the two and a quarter inch circle or whatever you have. Maybe you have the layering circles die set. You could use that. It really is a matter of preference, whichever you think looks better. And after I finish cutting this out, I'll show you one that I cut out with a circle punch. Okay, and there is the cut out sunflower image. Now, as I mentioned, if you prefer, you can cut that out as a, with a circle punch. It gives a different look to it. I just kind of prefer to take a little bit more time and cut out around some of the petals. Okay, now we've got all our pieces ready and we're ready to start putting the card together. So I pulled out some adhesive. I've got my standard snail tape runner. I've pulled out some Stampin' Dimensionals and I've pulled out a roll of Terran tape. Now if you have our old Fast Fuse adhesive, that works well too. Um, for putting embossed pieces down, I recommend a stronger adhesive. We no longer sell Fast Fuse for whatever reason. Um, you can get Tombow Extreme, I think it's called. That's very similar to the Fast Fuse to use. Or we have tear and tape adhesive. Now that's going to be stronger as well. I use it a lot on 3D items, but it also works well to stick embossed pieces down. So let's get started. You want to take that veneer, very vanilla piece and put it on the inside of your card. Since this is a really dark card base, you want a surface to write on on the inside. So I'm just adding some adhesive to the back of that and I'm going to center it in the card. Next you want to put your embossed layer down. So like I mentioned I'm going to put a layer of tear and tape adhesive all the way around that. I want to make sure that that does not pull up. So I'm just going to add that on all sides. It works just as well as the Fast Fuse. The only disadvantage this has for using it on the cards is that you have to go back and take the backing off of it. So it's just an added step. You can use your paper piercing tool or um, some scissors to help you pull up that backing, make it a little easier. There we go. Whoops. Okay. And then you want to stick that embossed piece on the front of your card, leaving an even border on all sides just like that. Next you want to pull out the stamped layer and the smaller early espresso layer and adhere those together. Okay. And once again I'm going to use tear and tape on the back of this since it's going down to that embossed layer. I just like to make sure things stick down firmly. You don't want to send a card to somebody and have it kind of fall apart in the mail. So it's worth the, the extra step to put this adhesive on the back of it for me. Um, you may be able to get by with just putting some extra snail adhesive on it. and that, Or actually another option would be the um, Tombow liquid glue. That would help help it stick down better too because you would cover the entire back of this layer with it. I'm not a glue person. I just don't like dealing with the mess of liquid glue. It works fine. I just don't prefer it. We all have our own preferences when we're crafting. So, oops. I'll 
Well, sometimes it just doesn't want to take that backing off. It helps a little bit if you press over the edge to ensure that that adhesive is really stuck down before you attempt to try to pry up the backing. Okay, and then just center that on your card front. Okay, the next thing we're going to put down is the banner that we punched, and you're going to put that about an inch from that very vanilla layer from the top of that. So I'm just using snail adhesive to stick that down. Make sure it's centered left to right. Okay. Next, we're going to put the leaves down. I'm just putting a little bit on each leaf. I'm going to put one about like this. And then I'm going to do the other one on the other side facing downward. About like that. And then you need to take that sunflower image and put some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of it. Now here I wanted to show you really quickly, if you decided to cut the sunflower out with a circle, it's going to look like that. I just kind of like the look of the sunflower cut out, so that's what I'm going to use. So I put about three Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of that. And take the backings off of them. If you've never used Stampin' Dimensionals before, they're, a, they're little pieces of foam with adhesive on both sides and they just help pop that layer off of your card a little bit and give it some dimension. It's a really cool way to add some interest to your card. Okay. And then just stick the sunflower down in the middle of the banner and that's all there is to it. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed this fall card tutorial. And if you love sunflowers as much as I do, I hope you'll make some of these cards. Now if you missed any of the measurements or any of the steps for making these cards, I have a written blog post that has all the instructions and everything you need to know. And I will put the link down in the description box below so you can click on over and check that out. Now, if you would like to make some of these sunflower cards yourself, I have links to all the products that I use down in the description box below. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so when you purchase through those links, it goes straight to my Stampin' Up! store and it helps to support my family and helps keep me producing these videos. If you would like to see more fun paper crafts like this one, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you want an alert every time that I post a new video, be sure to hit that little bell button next to the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy crafting!